our next, next speaker will be Jeff Shanks. Jeff has been an archaeologist with the National Park Service for eight years. Prior to that, he worked for the Florida Bureau of Archaeological Research. He is currently the acting program leader for the External Programs and NHL Division at the Southeast Archaeological Center in Tallahassee. In recent years, his primary area of research has been woodland, the Woodland Period sites on the Northeast Florida Gulf Coast. All right, thanks so much for having me. Uh, this has been a great conference so far. Uh, I'm going to be talking about one of the most ubiquitous archaeological features that we find in prehistoric maritime cultures, the sometimes humble shell midden. Um, but what I want to do is look at shell middens not just as uh, food refuse, although we can learn a lot about that, but uh, sometimes looking at uh, certain shell middens as part of a larger cultural landscape can tell us a lot more about uh, prehistoric people than just resource expo uh, exploitation or what the environment was like. So jump right in. I apologize a little bit for reading here, but if I don't stick to the script, I'll go way over 15 minutes. Make sure this works. All right, shell middens come in all shapes and sizes, from small pits in the ground to surface scatters to enormous piles, 20 meters tall and hundreds of meters across. There's a long-standing controversy in America as to whether the big prehistoric heaps of shell found along our coasts and inland waterways represent little more than the refuse of meals or of former cultures or something with more social, ceremonial, and ideological functions or meaning. Limited by their low opinions of cultures other than their own, many 19th century archaeologists concluded that, yes, indeed, shell mens were simply garbage piles and merely the refuse of feasting. You know, nothing to see here. Today, archaeologists have largely abandoned such ideas and for at least the last five decades have concentrated on addressing uh, what the shell and vertebrate fauna remains in shell middens can tell us about past environments and how shell mound building cultures adapted to those environments. This processual approach to shell middens has been an era of telephone booth archaeology, where the column sample has reigned supreme, uh, and ranked species list uh, has be, you know, become the main uh, data of reckoning. Such environmental ex explorations are, of course, necessary and important to modern archaeological understanding of prehistoric maritime cultures. And up until recent years, shell mounds and rings, when they were examined at all, were the subjects of these kinds of processual analyses. What did folks eat and discard at these rings, and uh, what did they tell us about their relationship with the environment? In the early 1990s, however, during a survey of NPS's Tamuquin Preserve in northeast Florida, Two shell rings were discovered, and these beg deeper analysis. Uh, they were actually discovered by Mike Russo. Uh, shell rings were circular and semicircular rings of shell, ranging from 50 to 80 meters in diameter and about a meter or two in height. Dating to between 3,500 and uh, 5,000 years in age, and found only along the coast of South Carolina and Georgia, the peculiar shapes of the rings puzzled 19th century and early 20th century investigators who recognized them as being uh, made of the same kinds of shell refuse found in most shell middens, but who speculated that their shapes must have also held some social or spiritual significance. The two uh, rings that were discovered in the Tamuquin Preserve were the first to be recognized in Florida, and they were a bit different. Uh, 200 more, uh, over 200 meters in diameter and up to four meters high, they were much larger. Uh, one of these, the Rollins ring, actually consisted of one large ring with 13 smaller asymmetrically shaped rings attached around its perimeter. Nothing exactly like this had been found in the heart of shell ring country in Georgia and South Carolina. In 2006, the, the known 42 archaic shell rings along the southeast U.S. coast were identified uh, in an NHL theme study, and the Fig Island shell ring complex of South Carolina was listed in the National Register uh, for its potential to yield important information on a national level of significance related to the builder's adaptation to the 4,500-year-old environmental conditions that existed at the time. And those conditions were far different than they stood at the time of the nomination. Uh, the theme study recognized that all shell rings were originally built on high land and maritime forests. A contemporary Fig Island stood in a saltwater marsh subject to daily tidal submergences of its base deposits. I'll show you just briefly. Here's the, the boundary that was drawn for, the, for this NHL uh, that Mike drew. And he mentioned that at the time he was uh, sort of encouraged to keep it as small as possible. And you see the boundary here only incorporates the shell men itself. Um, at the time, it wasn't, you know, we, we weren't thinking of this in terms of a, of a landscape, a cultural landscape. Had we approached this from that perspective, had Mike approached it from this perspective, 
that boundary might have been much broader and incorporated more of the, the environment around it. Uh, but in any case, for the first time, the theme study and nomination recognized shell rings as something other than just middens, uh, as social places wherein the deposits, which consisted of a little more than food refuse, held the potential to reveal insights into the social rankings of individuals and groups within the society and communal events involving large-scale feasting that culminated in the construction of the rings as monuments. Using comparative analyses from circular communities throughout the world and spatial theories of, of proxemics that analyzed the organization of space in, in houses and buildings and the layout of towns, the nomination argued that all shell rings, regardless of their shapes as circles, seas, or U's, were constructed of large piles of shell representing single sequential feasting events with the most shell being piled at points in the ring that spatial theory predicted were symbolically significant points in society uh, that uh, were often held by the most economically and symbolically most important uh, groups or individuals in that society. The evidence for feasting was represented in cross-sectioning the rings that revealed not sequential construction layers, but overlapping piles of shell representing temporally isolated events. Uh, the nomination suggested that rings were not built in construction sequences like Mississippian mounds, but rather communally as the epiphenomena of periodic feasting events that resulted in large amounts of shell. Purposefully and intentionally, the shell from each feast was gathered in one location in the ring over the course of time, enlarging and increasing the height of the rings, with more shell being deposited in those particularly symbolic points within the circle, C, or U plan of the construction. So also, about the same time as this nomination in 2006, uh, potential symbolic meaning was beginning to be discovered in a, in a very different, much younger type of shell midden along the northwest Florida Gulf Coast. Uh, in northwest Florida, the middle to late woodland archaeological cultures are known as the Swift Creek, identified by their complicated, state, uh, complicated stamp ceramics, and the Weedon Island culture, identified by their uh, intricate, uh, incised and punctated ceramics and a series of effigy vessels that function primarily as mortuary wear. Many coastal Swift Creek and Wheaton Island sites are demarcated by uh, roughly circular shell-bearing sh uh, shell middens surrounding a clean, level, open area or plaza. These sites have been termed ring middens, shell enclosures, or annual, uh, annular middens. Aside from organically stained soils, coastal ring middens contain mostly animal remains, shell and bone, that are universally inferred to reflect the accumulated daily food discard of long-term occupations, either permanent or seasonal, and are most often interpreted to be the remnants of villages or base camps. Many of the woodland period uh, ring middens on the northwest Florida coast are adjacent to sand mounds that contain multiple burials, and it's these mounds that have received the most uh, attention over the years, many of them being excavated by Clarence B. Moore over a century ago. During the 1970s, the, uh, the operating model tended to describe the burial mounds as sacred areas and the adjacent ring middens as uh, secular spaces. This uh, sacred-secular dichotomy uh, is now recognized as being overly simplistic, and subsequent excavation has shown that in many cases it's just simply wrong, as evidence of ceremonial activities can be found throughout the ring middens and plazas, as well as the mounds. Um, but it's still often thought of, and uh, the, the rings and, and, and mounds are often still thought of as separate sites. So that idea, even though we recognize it as you know, being somewhat outdated, it, it still kind of plays into our thinking somewhat. Uh, and you even see it in the case of uh, uh, naming the sites. A lot of these sites, the, the mound will have a separate site number than the midden, for example, even though really it should be seen as part of the same complex. So. Uh, for the last 10 years, the, the Southeast Archaeological Center, the National Park Service, has been working on a series of woodland mounted midden sites at Tyndall Air Force Base near Panama City. The mounds here were originally excavated by Moore, uh, but little archaeological work had been done on the middens. The four sites at which uh, NPS did their most extensive work are uh, Swift Creek, uh, the Swift Creek site, Baker's Landing, uh, the Wheaton Island Strange's Landing site, and uh, the Pearl Bayou and Hare Hammock sites, which have both Swift Creek uh, and uh, Weed Island phases. So as a result of these excavations and a large number of radiocarbon dates that were obtained, uh, we have a very good understanding of both the relative and absolute local chronology of the, uh, for the area, as well as some interesting uh, and intriguing observations on the nature of the shift 
from the earlier Swift Creek uh, middle woodland to the later Weedon Island uh, late woodland. The past two years, we've moved our focus further east to Wakulla County, south of Tallahassee, uh, where we found similar patterns in site formation, uh, ceramic seriation, and chronology at several woodland sites, uh, particularly Mound Field, uh, which is a Weedon Island site, and Bird Hammock, which again has both Swift Creek and Weedon Island components. Um, what we found uh, is that uh, there are certain phenomena observable in the archaeological record associated with that shift from middle to late woodland uh, that may have been regional in extent uh, rather than isolated locally to the Tendal Peninsula. These patterns only become apparent, however, when we start to view these mound and midden sites through the lens of landscape archaeology, view, uh, viewing the various components as part of a larger integrated spatial complexes. These complexes were laid out in generally concentric ring formations uh, from the central plaza to the outer edge uh, and beyond the mound, constituting five basic zones where the community activities took place. Uh, let me back up here a little bit if it'll let me. Um, here we go. Uh, these complexes were generally laid out in concentric ring formation. Um, so you have in the center the plaza area that's usually generally div mostly devoid of artifacts, uh, although we do find features. Uh, this is you know, sort of the central public sacred space. That's surrounded then by a ring of houses, you know, the habitation area. Beyond that, you have the refuse, the midden itself. Uh, then you have a sort of transitional area beyond the midden uh, where there may be processional areas leading to the mound that connects the mound with uh, with the habitation area that we haven't really been able to discern those yet. And then you have the mound itself beyond that, you know, this other sacred space. So, uh, you know, so together these, these different rings or, or, or different spaces, they, they constitute the basic structure of the built environment at coastal ring middens in this area. In contrast to previous models that spoke of the ring midden as the sole quotidian component of the village, this model uh, posits that these can, uh, these uh, concentric ring zones constitute the landscape of the many and diverse activity spheres, including the ceremonial and the ideological that constituted village life. When we expand our landscape view uh, spatially to incorporate the greater coastal region and temporally to include the shift uh, from the middle uh, to late woodland, more patterns emerge. Uh, the Swift Creek sites uh, tend to be uh, smaller and the uh, shell refuse tends to be more heavily concentrated and evenly distributed around the entire circumference of the ring midden. Uh, with the, the Wheaton Island sites, the shell is deposited only in certain locations within the ring, usually one side, uh, and the ring itself is only fully discernible by looking at the distribution of ceramics. Uh, so what may be going on is that you have, um, you can see here in this Wheaton Island ring, uh, this is actually uh, the ceramic distribution. You can see more artifacts on one side of the ring so it may be that we have populations living here in this village uh, more or less permanently, but then the rest of the ring gets filled in for feasting events and things like that uh, when you know, people come to visit the village. Um, so uh, the Weedon Island ring men's are also larger in diameter than their Swift Creek counterparts. Uh, based on the, the time of occupation of the sites and the amount of shell in the middens, there's no evidence, however, of an increase in population, despite the larger size of these Weedon Island rings. So there had to be some other reason that the inhabitants of, of the Wheaton Island ring men's required more dispersed living areas with a larger pl uh, plaza area than their Swift Creek predecessors. The placement of the burial mound relative to the uh, village plaza may have also taken on new significance after the appearance of, uh, um, after the appearance of Wheaton Island ceramics uh, that was not present during the Swift Creek period. Although there's too few examples to say for certain, there may have been a pattern of placing Wheaton Island uh, mounds to the northwest of the village. You can see that on uh, three of the four sites on the left side uh, of this image here. Um, that angle uh, would be sort of a rudimentary solstitial alignment. That is, to someone standing in the center of the plaza, on the winter solstice, they would see the sun uh, setting behind the burial mound. Um, so, you know, this is, again, something you only see when you look at these as a larger landscape. The, uh, also in the Weedon Island mounds, we find that uh, there's usually a, a ceramic cache on the east side of the mound or slightly southeast. This would be a sunrise um, alignment. So, so there seems to be some sort of solar uh, mortuary idea going on during the Weedon Island period that we don't see evidence for yet anyway in the Swift Creek, earlier Swift Creek period. 
One of the more interesting uh, conclusions we can draw from our extensive radiocarbon dating is how rapidly the shift from the Swift Creek to the Wheaton Island sites occurs. Around 650 to 700, the Swift Creek middens and mounds uh, go out of use, and new Wheaton Island middens and mounds appear, sometimes only a few dozen meters away, such as at Bird Hammock, uh, south of Tallahassee, and at Hare Hammock at Tyndall. Within a very short period of time, coincident with the introduction of the Wheaton Island uh, ceramics into the area, the people of this region felt the need to not only shift their villages to a new larger footprint, accommodating a much larger uh, plaza area, but also to construct a new burial mound uh, with possibly uh, solar-oriented placement. At Hare Hammock, there's even evidence to suggest that burials may have been exhumed from the older Swift Creek Mound and moved into the new Wheaton Island Mound uh, during this time, during this shift. So what we may have evidence for the archaeological record is uh, the appearance of a new religious idea, a new mortuary cult, a we this, maybe this Wheaton Island mortuary cult that spreads through the region all about the same, about the same time period, around 650-700. Uh, but this is only something that becomes apparent when these sites are viewed collectively as a cultural landscape. So by shifting our focus from looking at certain types of coastal shell middens as merely garbage uh, or food refuse and recognizing them as part of a larger cultural landscape, new social and ideological patterns can emerge and new archaeological and cultural significance may become discernible. Sites that when viewed in isolation uh, may not meet the threshold for nomination, just another shell midden, just food refuse, uh, can instead become a contributing element as part of a greater cultural landscape. 